Hi, I'm Joe, and today I'm going to show you how I work with Virtual Soundcheck on the Waves LV1 system. Well, first of all, what is Virtual Soundcheck? Well, uh, on the LV1 console and uh, basically any digital console, you can recall all inputs uh, and then play that recording back through the console. Uh, for me, I use a separate uh, laptop for all the recordings, so my host computer on the LV1 system uh, don't have to deal with the recording. Well, there's a lot of pros to working with virtual sound check. Uh, I always record uh, the the sound check with with the band, and uh, then later on I can. Uh, uh, fine-tune things that I did not have time for during the, the actual sound check. Or if I'm doing a tour, uh, I would then record the show and when I get back to the studio, I will have a nice cup of co coffee and go through things. And uh, uh, if I had some issues during the show, I can uh, find those issues and uh, possibly find a solution. So with all of these systems, you can obviously record all the input channels, but you can also record all the outputs. Uh, so what I typically do is I record all my aux sends that go to in-ear or wedges, uh, but also my uh, left-right main main bus. So virtual soundcheck is a way to improve your mix without taking up too much time from the artist. So uh, let's dive into the LV1 and see how I set things up. So let's look into how I set all this up. Uh, I have uh, two input devices. I have my uh, Mac Air uh, for the actual recording and the server. On the computer that's doing the actual recording, in, in my case, the Mac Air, uh, you need to go to the Wave Central and download the uh, SoundGrid driver control. Uh, and when installing that, uh, then the, the SoundGrid network will show up in, in, in your DAW, uh, the SoundGrid network will show up uh, basically like a, uh, like an audio interface. And in my case, I use Reaper, and then I can just uh, create a new track and select what channel from the SoundGrid network I want to record. Uh, and then I also send it back out uh, through the same, uh, the same channel number just to keep things in order. So back on the LV1, let's have a look at how to set this up. Uh, I will use uh, channel one to show you how it's done. And then it's just to do uh, exactly the same thing on all channels you want to uh, record. So let's go into the patch view. Uh, and here, let's go to the output section and to the direct out. Um, and up here I have all my uh, devices. So uh, let's just hide uh, everything that's not the Mac Air. Uh, in, the, in this case, I uh, send the, the first channel, the Beta 58 that I uh, have here for, for testing purposes. Uh, I will send this to, uh, to channel one in the DAW. So obviously in the DAW I will uh, set channel 1 to listen to input uh, 1. So during the sound check I will just uh, press record uh, in the DAW and then perform the sound check as, as usual. Uh, and then uh, after the, the, the real sound check is done uh, I can then go to uh, my, my input, in this case uh, channel 1 and flip to uh, the, uh, the, the input section, flip from A to B. And uh, so right now, the mixing console, console is, is listening to uh, the microphone. And if I flip to B, it is listening for sound on, in this case, channel one from the DAW. And uh, I mean, if you only have one channel, it's easy enough to just flip through A and B. Uh, if you have a lot of channels, a better way is to set up a shortcut uh, or uh, rather a, use, a user key uh, 
Um, so let's go for user key 10 and then you just uh, put in flip a, uh, flip a b input channel. Uh, uh, what that, what that uh, let, let us do is just press this one and cho choose yes. Then the console will let us flip the inputs for all of the channels uh, in, in one go. Um, I will not do this since that will mess up my recording, but that, that is how you would uh, typically do it. In this case, I will just use the AB flip uh, on, the, on the individual channel. So that's easy enough, but there is a way to mess things up. Uh, so let's dive deeper uh, and have a look at uh, a few pitfalls that you might fall into. Uh, so let's go to the patch window. And uh, here you can see that uh, uh, it's, it's possible to toggle bet between four different uh, places to pick up the, the signal. So let's just go through all of this so you know uh, which one to use in which case. Uh, so uh, the typical setting is to use the uh, this one, the green one, the, the input. Uh, and this basically takes the signal directly from the input uh, before any processing, before any uh, fader level uh, and send it to the DAW. And, uh, in a typical uh, virtual sound check uh, session, that is how you would, would do it. Let's just hit record in, in Reaper. And let's see, yes, we have signal on the microphone. So during the sound check, obviously I will do some, uh, uh, some tweaking, some EQing, some, uh, some stuff here. Um, and all of these things will not be recorded. And let's see if that's true. I stop the recording and um, let's uh, let's turn off uh, this EQ and flip to the B. And then let's just play press play on the recording. During the sound check, obviously, I will do some. Uh, uh, some tweaking, some EQing, some uh, I don't know what, but uh... yeah. Uh, so uh, as you can hear, none of the moves I did on the equalizer is recorded. And that's typically how you would want it because if I were to record this EQ setting, um, then when I I play the virtual sound check back, uh, I will then have all these EQ settings recorded and then done all over again. Uh, and that is uh, what you would call uh, wrong. So let's go through the other modes and find use cases for them. So let's go to the next one. It's uh, pre-fader. Uh, and we go back to the channel input. And in this case, let's put a super drastic EQ on it so it will be obvious uh, what's happening. and. Let's press record. So this is the recording for the pre-fader setting, uh, and this will take in account every uh, EQ dynamic move we will make. All right, and then we have to flip back to the uh, uh, to the B input in order to listen to the the DAW, and let's turn off the the EQ so that we will hear only what's actually recorded. So this is the recording for the pre-fader setting, uh, and this will take in account every uh, EQ dynamic move. We so obviously the EQ is recorded. It sounds absolutely terrible. Uh, so why would you use that? Well, uh, for virtual sound chip, there is absolutely no use to use this mode. But if you are in the studio recording, uh, you could absolutely benefit from recording uh, EQs and some compression maybe uh, in order to just uh, have a recording that's closer to the final product. So that would basically uh, be the use case for, for, for this mode. And uh, you, you will record it before any fader moves. So uh, if you're in the studio, 
want to to hear things uh, louder, uh, you can just turn things up and down, and it will not uh, do anything to the recording. Um, next one is uh, post fader, and it's just the same thing, but it will take in account uh, the 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 fader level. So. Uh, let's again flip to the A input. Uh, we have signal. Let's use this uh, silly EQ again, and let's let's test this one. So this is the recording uh, of the fader. So if I turn the fader down, uh, the level of the recording will turn down. If I turn it down even more, you will basically not even hear me and we're back to kind of unity gain this is uh, the post fader uh, recording all right let's have a listen to this one let's flip to the b input and i can now see that i i forgot to engage the eq so this will not be in the recording but we will hear any uh, fader moves so let's just press play on the DAW and have a listen. So this is the recording uh, of the fader. So if I turn the fader down, uh, the level of the recording will turn down. If I turn it down even more, you will basically not even hear me. And we're back to kind of unity gain. All right, so when would you use this? Well, again, in the studio, if you want to record any fader moves, if you want to kind of do a real uh, live recording, uh, this would be the setting to use. Uh, I would rarely use this one. Uh, the last one is post pan. So it's uh, then, then on a stereo channel, it would take into account the pan setting as well. Uh, also uh, a setting that I would rarely use. So for vir virtual sound check, stick to the input setting and you will be good to go. Except for mix buses. So let's have a look at, um, let's record uh, the mix bus for the in-ear mo monitoring for, for an artist. Uh, in this case, I will send this one to uh, output uh, two and three, and then in the DAW uh, record uh, input two and three. Um, so let's flip back to, um, uh, let's see, we're going to do the the A input in order to actually listen to this microphone. And then let's uh, send this one to the in-air listening. So here we go, we have some signal. And um, uh, what I would use is the post pan uh, setting for recording uh, any, any mix bus, uh, any uh, aux send. Uh, because then it would take into account what I'm actually sending to the in-ear every pan move. So let's press uh, record in Reaper and uh, let's bring up some volume. This is the recording for the aux uh, one. Uh, and if I do some silly recording, uh, sorry, some silly panning, uh, this will be recorded. And also any EQ moves will be recorded uh, because this time I remember to turn the EQ on. So uh, everything I do uh, will be recorded. Uh, volume, EQ, and some panning. So let's see if that's true. And in order to listen to this, I just created a new channel uh, that picks up the, the, the output from the recorded uh, track in Reaper. So it will be like this. Bring up some volume. This is the recording for the aux uh, one. Uh, and if I do some silly recording, uh, sorry, some silly panning, uh, this will be recorded. And also any 
EQ moves will be recorded uh, because this time I remember to turn the EQ on. So there we go. Uh, that's how I record the uh, the accent and uh, same thing for the the main master bus. So I uh, so I will record uh, what's actually being sent. So that's how I work with uh, virtual sound check. Uh, if you work in another way, uh, please let me know. I would love to to hear uh, why you you would do uh, why you would do it in a different way. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is how I do it. It's not the only way, or uh, it's what I find to be the best way. But uh, uh, there's no universal truth uh, to all of this. Uh, and uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to answer anything I can.